Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're taking a look at a passage of scripture in Jeremiah chapter 6, where God tells the people, ask for the ancient paths and to walk in it, to walk in this godly way. And so today is what's referred to as the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. This is like a new beginning, like a fresh start, the yearly cycle starting over again. And as we get started with this next time around the yearly cycle, we're going to be asking God today to help us to walk in the ancient paths in his ways. So let's get started with prayer, and then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening, their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us and to make your face shine upon us. Let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ. And to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us be sensitive to those opportunities. And make the most of them. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. And do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to go through our filters for today. So these filters are short things that I write at the top of my journal every night as a way to help me stay in rhythm with God, to keep things top of mind, and to filter my decision-making. I like to start with the big picture vision, which for me personally, that's Abundant Life Training Centers all over the world making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. About 10 years ago, my life completely changed course when Proverbs 13, 22 inspired me to start creating manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So I set out to create manuals for areas like purpose and health and family and finances, order, time, and community. But when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God. He began to show me this ancient path. This ancient path is a completely different way to operate my life. He began to show up, began to teach me, began to train me. It turned into a series of books and courses and blueprints and now partners that we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And the goal is to build abundant life training centers all over the world that are implementing these blueprints, thriving communities of people, doing this together, doing it together in partnership, doing it together in unity, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. And this year in 2022, we've been focused on the year of the beautiful land. In the Old Testament, God told the people he's going to give them the best and most beautiful land in the entire world as their inheritance. And that's symbolic for us of this rich inheritance that we have in Christ. And this year, God's been teaching us how to possess that land, hold a hold fast to it, by filling up the basket of praise. 
And we've talked about the example of two baskets on a balancing scale. On one side, you got a basket full of all the issues and problems that we face. And we could fill that basket up with venting and complaining and pouting. Or there's another option, the basket of praise. Filling up the basket of praise, praising God for who he is, praising him for all that he's done for us in our lives. Praising him for all that he's done for us in Christ, all of his promises in Christ. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. We can throw those problems into that basket of problems, but then we got to leave them there. We're going to turn around and we're going to go back and fill up that basket of praise. And it's going to help us to walk in those promises, to keep them and to hold fast to them. Help us to magnify the light. And then this month in October of 2022, our focus has been on understanding the times. In First Chronicles chapter 12, it says the people of Issachar understood the times. And because of that, they knew what to do. Understanding leads to knowing. Understanding leads to knowing what's the best course of action to take. And I believe the most important thing for us to understand is God's grace. Colossians 1.6 says, The gospel bears fruit in our lives ever since the day we understood God's grace. Understanding that in the invisible world where we can't see him working all the time, God is working continually for our good. Even when we feel like we've missed it and we've fallen short, he keeps working for our good because it's grace that changes our hearts. Gives us the power to walk out the things that we know to do. Changes us as people. And then this week, on our yearly cycle, think of the yearly cycle as a circle of a year. A 360 degree view of who God is and all that he's done for us in Christ. Different times of the year. Give us little nudges back in the right direction. Give us reminders. And right now, today is what's called the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. In the book of John, it was called the last great day. It was the day when Jesus stood up and said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. And out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. It's a reminder today of God's greatness, the greatness of Jesus. That he wants to make us great. It's a reminder of his grace, a fresh start, a new beginning. And as we get started on this new beginning, we're going to be asking for these ancient paths today. So here's the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. And in the context of this verse, I was reading through Jeremiah, and it's just like God began to open my eyes. He was just showing me how rebellious the people were. They kept uh, just getting off track. God was reaching out to them. He's trying to do good. He's trying to correct them. He's trying to nudge them back in the right direction. And they're just stiff-necked, they're hard-hearted, they don't want to listen. And he says, this is what he tells them. The Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But then it says, the people said, we will not walk in it. They refused to follow it. And so Heavenly Father, we are asking for your help today. We are asking for the ancient paths. We're asking where the good way is that leads us to finding rest for our souls. Help us to find those ancient paths in that good way. And help us to be sensitive to your leading, to listen to you, to follow you, to obey you in this. Give us the hearts that want to walk out what you've called us to do, to walk in these good ways. And we thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We'd all missed it. We'd all gone astray. And God laid upon him the sins and the iniquities of us all, the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God, smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in God's sight. He could show us these ancient paths in this good way. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And he raised us up together with him. And made us sit together with him. And communion is supposed to be a celebration of that union. Our oneness with him. Being united with him. A time for us to remember that today. 
And Father, I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. He makes his people great. His blood washes us and cleanses us, gives us this fresh start in life today. We have this reminder of this today. A fresh start in life. Walking on these ancient paths with God. Walking it together with him. So, Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread or juice, you can take your juice. All right, so after our time of communion, we usually do some health and fitness tips. Because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. I want you to think about the ancient paths when it comes to health. In today's world, things have gotten pretty fancy. They've gotten kind of complicated, overly stressful probably when it comes to diet, when it comes to nutrition, exercise, all these types of things. I believe God's got an ancient path, a good way for us to walk in as far as our health and fitness goes as well. And Heavenly Father, we're asking for that path as well. In Jesus' name. Let's keep it simple. Very, very simple. Simple but beautiful. Hope this has been helpful for you today. If you like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.